it was very different from living anywhere else that I've lived in. It wasn't what towers are usually perceived to be. People probably think everybody's benefits scrounge, are not working. It's just the stigma that council blocks have. No, it wasn't true. I would say the tower is no different to any street in London where you have multi-faiths, different languages, some people that are working, some people that are on benefits, you know? It's just that we were all in a tower. The tower, from the outside, it looked old, but on the inside, it was like a different place. Friends and family, they used to come into our flat. The first thing they used to say, oh, I didn't realise it was like this. Once you're inside, you, you almost felt like you're connected to a different community. A different world, yeah. You have to make a place your own in order to feel comfortable in it, and we made it our own. At least I did. That was the place I, I grew up in, and to me, it was a home. And it wasn't just a flat, it was people's homes. It was our home. I just said yes. I really liked the view and the space it was. Oh my God, it's like, I'm not gonna find any, any spacious flats like this one. The first time we saw our flat, um, it was for us, we, we like fell in love with the flat. When I first walked into the flat, it was, um, it was very big because there was nothing in it, obviously. Um, it was very airy, very bright. We had a lot of windows. I mean, it was the 18th floor, and you look out the window and you can see the whole of London. The views were absolutely spectacular. You know, there were certain days where you would look at it and you'd just stare and, and admire the beauty. I would love to stand there and just look at planes thinking, I wonder who's going where, and I wonder what they're going to do. Are they going for holiday? Are they going, what are they going to do? You just stand there and let yourself go. This would have been our first permanent place, a place that you could decorate, um, a place that you're not going to be told that you need to move out next month. It was exciting, finally, knowing that you're going to settle. You're not going to have to think about moving again. It was the first time we had something we could call our home. Our space. Our space. There was two things that the tower brought. It brought that sense of London, because you could obviously see the whole landscape all around you, and it was city the whole way through. But it was also a sense of freedom, because on that level, there was nothing in your way unless you looked down. It was almost like the whole world was there for us to, to go out and explore. Our flat, I used to call it a greenhouse. You could feel the warmth coming in the living room. It was almost like a Madeira. Back home, my parents, they have this huge avocado tree. Personally, I don't like avocado, but he loves avocado. So, um, so he said, oh, let's, let's try and, and have a, a tree, avocado tree. Uh, I said, oh, I don't think that he's gonna, you know, do much in a flat because, you know, that's like a, in a tropical weather, but let's try. And oh my God, no one could touch that avocado tree. And it grew so much that it looked like a person with the arms open asking you for a hug. We had a lemon tree, mm. we had an orange tree, a lychee. The spiky one. It was yellowy, greeny. Portuguese ivy was really nice. It was like purpley with green. Yeah, we'd get excited and over yeah, it as well. Yeah, we were. We'd call we each were other, amazed. Oh, there's, there's a new bud over here, and it's getting ready to, yeah. to open up. And we'd come over and have a little family congregation around the flower. Yeah. Sounds a bit weird. <laughs> to be honest, I don't think there was any more space to put no. any more flowers. I don't know. It's it more more than home, even. It, it was a living place, really, for us. At the time, I was seven months pregnant, boy, and the girls were very excited. Yeah, we were just waiting for the, um, 
for both mm. at, that, at that moment. Yeah. I painted each and every room cream color. I put in African decorations, uh, poetry sculptures, uh, Maasai sculptures, two masks and a mirror. It makes me feel like I'm home in London and yet still in Africa as well. I had a frame with uh, lots of pictures inside them, the picture of all my family. My dad who's passed away, my mom, two brothers, two sisters, and my grandfather. Then I had my daughter. I lost my daughter a long time ago in Uganda and um, it's still painful to me up to today. Um, her name was Isabella and that was the only picture that I had because all the pictures were lost. So I had only one picture. It was a treasure to me, a precious thing that I didn't think to get a copy or I just put it there knowing it's safe. What could happen to it? I loved my room because I had recently redecorated it. It started sort of as procrastination. Um, I was supposed to be revising my exams, but um, I just decided to draw on my wall. It sort of patterns, flowery patterns, that I'd start a, around my light switch and then I'd add to the outside of it. So it became a sort of giant flower. Once the patterns started to emerge, they were very geometrical shapes, so I, I, I could see her mind at work, you know, the mathematical side of it at work. So from one corner I'd started as well, and then from the bottom corner I'd started, and then at some point it would meet, and it'd create lots of flowers around my wall. I never got to do that, unfortunately. The lift was like crowded. You wouldn't understand nothing what was going on inside that lift. I don't know, maybe five, five languages spoken inside that lift. Spanish, Portuguese, English, Irish, Italian. People from Africa, people from Europe, people from the Middle East. You know, lots of different languages were spoken. So it was always interesting. Grenfell represented each and every culture and each and every colour. There was a stigma that no one worked in the tower. You know, this was complete fabrication. Working in IT, working in a government, families with their own businesses. There was nurses and teachers. It was far from being a, a broken tower as it's perceived. There was a lot of people that were friends with each other in a tower that lived on different floors. It was amazing, it was amazing yeah. Because we, we were like a family. Kids, used, they used to play together in the hallway. I was cooking and I need the salt. I could knock on any door. The kids loved it. It's where they made a lot of friends. You know, makes me feel very proud. That shows that you can all get along. It doesn't matter where you're from, it doesn't matter what background, it doesn't matter who you are, you just get along as human beings. So I think it was brilliant. On the uh, night of the fire, we were woken probably around one in the morning. I just remember shouting out, where's the fire, is it up or is it down? And I said, uh, but there's a fire on the building, we have to, to leave. They went to the door and there was smoke already coming in. It was so surreal, it didn't feel like it was actually happening. It felt like it was a dream and I just wanted to wake up. 
from the fire service. You know, we were told, you know, stay, stay in the flat. Uh, explained that my wife, seven months pregnant. You know, we were quite lucky that we, we managed to escape before any of the panic started to ensue. I looked at the window, it was on fire. The Moses basket was on fire. We need to go, there's no turning back. I mean, I don't even have words for it, to be honest with you. I was just in complete shock. I thought I was maybe dreaming or in a film or something. It didn't look real. I told him, just fold the rail down. I would stay lost to try and push everybody down. I came out quite early and I stood there and watched. I watched it burning. The smoke, you, you couldn't see anything. My daughter said, Dad, I can't. And I found out at that moment she was, she was actually behind me. So I, kept, I shouted to her and I said, I'm right here. She said, I can't. I kept asking my brother, is it going to reach our flat? Is it going to reach our flat? And he kept saying no. The whole thing was just a nightmare. You asking yourself, how did this happen? How, how is it possible? But you know, we'll be forever grateful. Mm. There was a, a light coming up and there was a firefighter. And we could see the people waving and begging on the windows. And then they disappeared. I remember when we woke up on Thursday morning, I said to Miguel, we hug each other. I was crying, we were crying, and I said, we lost everything. A life of 25 years, we lost everything. And then something inside me said, you lost everything, but you have everything. And then is when I realized that I was selfish to, to think to I lost, that, to yes. say that, to think that I lost everything, my flat and my, all my possessions. And there were people who died inside. So from that moment on, I never said that again. So when I woke up, I thought I'd just been sleeping for a day. And, you know, I was just waking up to see what happened. And but apparently it wasn't like that. So I've been in induced coma for a week. Logan didn't survive. It was a stillbirth. I don't know why, how, but I knew already that, that, that we had lost him. And I remember on that morning, Ines said, I'm going to school. I said, you can't go to school because she was wearing a, a jeans and a white top, you know, black from the smoke. And she said, I don't care, I'm going. I've been studying so hard, I'm not going to miss my exam. It was weird walking into school without my uniform. Everyone looking at me differently. People were scared to come up and speak to me. I guess I wanted for it to be as normal as possible. I don't think we miss our possessions. Possessions can be replaced. Um, yeah, well, it's, it's the sentimental yeah. bits yeah. that uh, are the hardest to replace. Pictures that do capture moments in time that cannot be reconstructed it's just that, that's the, that, that is it. We will try in the future to have, again, our little trees and our green spaces and, yes. We will, definitely. we will make our home again. Yeah, 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 definitely. Absolutely. Finding a place where we can call our home and start another life. I know it's never going to be the same thing, but uh, we look forward to that. I hope in the future, when I get my permanent bedroom, I hope to redo the mural. I hope to finish what I started. I mean, I don't even have all the answers to how I go about rebuilding my life. I just know I take it a day at a time. Grenfell will forever be in our hearts, but.
try to move on as best we can, not forgetting the people who died, never ever forgetting the people who died. <laughs>